So now let's look at now how do we write electronic configuration? So how do we write addresses? How do we find the exact location of these uh, electrons using these orbitals? So that's when we need to use something called as quantum numbers. So now let me explain quantum numbers. Let's get into that. What are these quantum numbers? Actually, quantum numbers came out as a solution for Schrodinger's wave equation. And these are actually parameters explaining the electron behavior around the nucleus. In simpler terms, these quantum numbers kind of gives us the address of an electron around the nucleus. Now, I just want to show you something. So what do you see on the screen? Yeah, that's my driver's license. So what do you see in that? You have my photograph, you have my name, you have my address. Now, if I ask you one question that you have to find me, you know, locate me, what would you do? Yeah, I know you'll go to that address. But one thing, would you find me there? Most likely not. But then what else would you do? You would go to Baiju's classes and say, where is that hairy chemistry professor? Right? And what would they say? They say, they might say, I'm there, I'm not there. But are you 100% sure that you can find me there? No, right? So just like that, the principal quantum numbers and the other quantum numbers, which we're going to talk about, are actually going to help us finding the address of that electron. And that address is not always accurate, but the most probabilistic location for finding an electron around an atom. Now let's talk about principal quantum number. So what is this principal quantum number? Like we discussed, the principal quantum number gives us the energy level at which the electron is present. And this is denoted by the letter N. Now that you know that the electron cannot exist around the nucleus without any energy. Can it exist? No, right? Because the energy levels are quantized. So it needs some minimum amount of energy to stay there. To stay there. So just like that, the value of N for an electron present in the lowest energy state, the value of N is 1. So as we progress in energy states, energy levels, the value of n increases such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So that basically gives you an idea of the principal quantum numbers. And in fact, this is something which you've already learned before. K shell, L shell, M shell, right? Very familiar, right? Yeah. Now just forget all those. Here onwards, you're going to call them as letter n is equal to 1, 2, 3. So now that I've explained you the principal quantum number, can you tell me what would happen for an electron whose principal quantum number was increasing. What would happen? It would actually move away from the nucleus, which means higher the principal quantum number, the electron is located at a larger distance from the nucleus. So the principal quantum number, so actually indicates the size of an atom. So the next quantum number we're going to discuss is called the azimuthal quantum number. Pretty complicated name, right? No, it was also, you can also call it as the angular momentum quantum number. So this actually came out from the angular momentum of the electrons around the nucleus. So now, when you look at the radial probability distribution graph and interpret that in three dimensions, what did we get? We actually got an orbital. So what is an orbital? An orbital is a region around the nucleus where I have the most likely probability of finding an electron. And that probability is almost 95%. So if I just join all those dots around the nucleus, I get an orbital. So for the first energy level for hydrogen, the orbital shape is almost spherical. And we call this as the S orbital. So we get different shapes as we go higher in energy levels. So those orbitals are called as we have S orbital and we have P orbital, which actually looks like this. Then we have the D orbital, which actually could look like this, like this, like this, like this. And we have the F orbital. Oof, so many complicated shapes. So these are different regions where around the nucleus, you have a very great chance of finding an electron. And these are called orbitals. The azimuthal quantum number represented by L actually ranges from the values 0 to n minus 1. So what is n? n is the principal quantum number. Now let's examine the values of L, how it varies with respect to n. If you consider for the first energy level, n is equal to 1. And what's the value of L? L is equal to 0, which means in the first energy level, only s orbital can exist. Now, for so the second energy level, n is equal to 2. And we know that L takes values from 0 to n minus 1. So we have L is equal to 0 
and n equal to 1. So, in the second energy level, we have both the s orbital and the p orbital. So, similarly, for n is equal to 3, energy level 3, what do we have? L is equal to 0, 1 and 2, which means that in third energy level, we have three different kinds of orbitals. We have s, p and d and, and you can just extrapolate and you know go ahead for the other orbitals as well. The next quantum number is called the magnetic quantum number indicated by the letter m. So, what does this quantum number indicate? It indicates the orientation of these orbitals around the nucleus. It means that in how many different positions can these orbitals, you know, arrange themselves around the nucleus. That's what is indicated by the magnetic quantum number. And this magnetic quantum number ranges from the values minus L to plus L. So, what is minus L here? It is the azimuthal quantum number. So, now, if I take for the energy level 1, what happens? N is equal to 1, L is equal to 0 and what would be the magnetic quantum number? Minus 0 to plus 0 which is actually 0 which means that for an S orbital you only have one possible orientation which means that very intuitive right? So, S orbital is spherical. So, how many different ways can a sphere orient around itself? Only one possible way. So, that's what the magnetic quantum number indicates. Now, for the second energy level, let's calculate the magnetic quantum number. So, for the second energy level, n is equal to 2. So what's the value of L? From 0 to n minus 1, which is 0 and 1. Now, for L is equal to 1, what is the magnetic quantum number? m is equal to minus 1, 0 and plus 1. So, there are actually three different angular orientations for L is equal to 1, which means that the P has three different orbitals. So, for our visualization, how do we represent them? We represent the P orbitals such as Px, which is oriented along the x axis. We have Py, which is oriented along the y axis and Pz, which is oriented along the z axis. So, now let's examine for the energy level 3. So, for energy level 3, n is equal to 3. So, what's L? L is 0, 1, 2. So, now what's the magnetic quantum number? You know the orientations for L is equal to 0 and L is equal to 1. For L is equal to 2, the magnetic quantum number is minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1 and plus 2. So, there are five different d orbitals oriented in space around the nucleus. So, what are these? So, we have d x y in which the two dumbbells are oriented between the x and y axis. Then we have d y z where the dumbbells are oriented between the y and z axes. Then we have d x z where the dumbbells are oriented between the x and z axis. And then we have d x square minus y square where the dumbbells are oriented along the x and y axis and d z square where the dumbbell, one dumbbell is oriented along the z axis with a little donut at the node. 